my channel i hope you guys are doing well so my name is kenia and i am a small business owner as well as a master's student so on today's video i thought i would show you guys how i'm able to do my shipping labels both internationally and domestically i might as well like kill two birds with one stone so here are a few things that you need if you plan to ship from the comfort of your own home so in no particular order you first need a scale you need a scale to weigh your package so you can input the weight onto you know the Royal Mail website that's one of the first things that they ask for so you also need some paper as well to print out your shipping label with but this is no ordinary paper right this paper is actually sticky so you can literally remove the label and put it on top of your package ideally as well if you have a printer at home you are very much lucky and you're at an advantage so basically I use this printer right here um, to print out all my shipping labels mm -hmm. If you don't have a printer at home, then there are a few printing shops that are open and that you can access, hopefully, where you can print out your shipping labels. Or ideally, you can also go to your post office as well. Uh, last but not least, you need your poly mailers. So this is a poly mailer and this is a bigger version because I do have, you know, um, boxes as well. They both have bubble mailers inside to protect the product. By the way, I will have all the links down below in the description box below. And it is an affiliate link, so if you do decide to go with my recommendation, then the link will also provide me an opportunity to get remunerated so yeah so without further ado so I'm gonna begin with domestically but first and foremost you have to go to the Royal Mail website um, so basically I did realize that I do indeed have a personal account and not a business account But I believe to qualify for a business account you do need to be sending out parcels consistently But in the meantime, I'm gonna log into my personal account then you'll be presented with this so what I do is go and click and drop and then that's why the scale is very important because you need to input how much your parcel weighs so my parcel weighs 300 grams and I'm sending it to the UK because it is a domestic shipping label that I wish to produce so now that um, I've put in the details it gives me these options so I can either do it as a large letter small parcel medium parcel or tube okay. what you have to do is um, according to what your parcel is and according to what your package size is you have to opt for whichever one is most convenient for you and whichever one you choose um, should reflect how your package looks like my package looks like a small parcel so I am gonna opt for the small parcel I'm gonna go and continue and then you have um, the following services so you have all of these to choose from and it really is relative to how fast and how quick you want your package to be sent out and whether you want it to be tracked or not so you have all these different options Roma second class as you know that would be the cheapest option because it does get there within two to three business days whereas Royal Mail first class will be there within one to two business days however a lot of parcels are being delayed because of COVID so you should bear that in mind as well and then you've got you know you've got sign for first class so you've got trapped 48 48 just means 48 hours and then you've got trapped 24 hours and then you've got royal mail special delivery guaranteed by 1 p.m so you've got all of these um options to choose from but i'm gonna go for the one that's most convenient for my pockets which is the royal mail first class and then you they do let you know where you can drop these items off at so you can drop it off at the post box the post office the delivery office or collection i personally don't think my item will fit through the post box so i'm gonna opt for the delivery office um, but they're just letting you know where you can send it off but I usually would always go to my delivery office because there is just a less queue unlike my post office which literally goes around the block if you can find your nearest Royal Mail delivery office you will save yourself so much time um, and then I go on continue and then now I have to input some sensitive data and put the details of my customer and then I'm gonna go and continue Okay, so now this is where I put my address. And then one of the questions I always get is, oh, how do I kind of circumvent the privacy issue? And this is where you say you opt out. Show this address on the label, no thank you. So I literally just press that button and that ensures that my address does not go on the label. This is key guys, it's quite small, you can easily miss it, but please opt out if you do not want your address to be seen on the label. Now that I've opted out, I'm just going to input my postcode and my own address. So now that I've completed all the details, I have to pay £3.68p. Then if you go down, you just have to input your email address so they can send you a receipt and confirm that you've indeed purchased a shipping label from them. 
you know, you just have to confirm that I've entered the correct weight and you have to confirm that you've read and understood the terms and conditions. And then you can either pay with PayPal or you can pay with your debit or credit card. And I usually just pay with my debit card. And now it's just going to clarify with my bank that I have indeed made this transaction. And then I will be presented with my shipping labels. So then it produces your shipping label for you. I've blurred it out, but then you just download it and you can print it out. I'm gonna print it out on the sticky paper and then just literally slap it on my parcel. Um, so that's how easy it is for domestic shipping label, guys. It's really, really simple. And the fact that you're able to opt out and not put your home address makes it even more convenient. So now that I'm going to do my international shipping label, I'm going to go ahead and put my package on my scale and see how much it weighs in grams. So it weighs 458 grams. And then I'm going to input this data onto my Royal Mail website. Once I'm on the Royal Mail website, I'm going to go to sending. And then I'm going to go on international standard. And then here are the features. Europe delivery aimed between three to five working days. Worldwide delivery aimed between six to seven working days. There's a compensation cover up to £20 included. And then there is also free returns for undelivered items. And then here you have like a rough estimation of how much it's going to cost you. Um, but it's all relative to whether you're sending off letters, large letters, parcels, unprinted papers, etc. So please go on the Royal Mail website for further indication on how much your package will cost you. So for example, I'm going to be sending off a parcel which weighs roughly 550 uh, grams and I'm going to be sending it off to Europe so I'm going to be expecting to pay roughly £7.80 so this gives a good indication on how much you are going to spend and then here are the different categories as mentioned before letter, large letter, parcel, tubes and rolls and then these are the sizes that you can just you know refer back to as well um, and then you have to ensure that the package that you're sending off is not prohibited or restricted in the country you're sending it off to. Uh, so yeah, just double check that. And now, this is one of the main questions I always, always get and it's to do with custom labels. So as you know, we have officially left the European Union. Because of Brexit, each parcel that is being shipped out internationally now requires a customs label. For items with a value up to £270, you will need to fill out a customs form CN22, which is like the most, you know, regular one that a lot of people have to fill out. Uh, however, if you have an item that is valued over £270, then you'll need to fill out a CN22 form and in this process I'm going to show you guys how to actually fill out a customs form CN22 so yeah when when we get to that bridge I'll show you for the meantime I'm going to go ahead and click and drop as usual okay so I'm sending my package off to Sweden and it weighs 458 458 grams I'm gonna make it 460 only because I forgot to add in the little suite that I add in for each and every parcel so I'm gonna say 460 send the item out as expected I'm gonna be paying you know roughly 745p so for international economy, it's for heavier parcels that don't need to arrive in a hurry and the delivery aim is between 2 to 12 weeks and it's £7.45p but I hope to deliver my parcel between 3 to 5 working days so I usually opt for the international standard. However, if you do want to go for international tracked, then it allows your package to be tracked and it gives you, you know, updates on where your package is at all times. And that is a little bit more expensive, hence why it's 11.40 as opposed to 7.50. And international tracked and signed um, means that obviously the recipient would have to sign for their parcel in order to receive it. And that's 11.40. 80 but with me i'm just gonna opt for the international standard because this is the one that's most efficient for my pockets and i've sent out products in the past to, to denmark france the usa and they've all received their packages with international standard so there is definitely a fear when you don't have it tracked i do make sure to contact the people and ensure that they've got their packages but once again these are like people that i know so i can easily just you know message them but for your actual customers who you don't know 
perhaps it might be worth getting international track. Another alternative is to make your customer pay for their shipping or you can subsidize it yourself um, it's all relative to again your budget so you can make your customer pay for the international track 1140 or you can perhaps pay for half of it or you pay for it all it's again all relative to your budget there are four places that you can shop your items off to you can do the post box you can do the post office the delivery office or collection mm -hmm. i've had a few questions in regards to collection like can royal mail come to my house to pick up your parcel um i'm assuming they can because they have this available depending on where you live you can arrange to have your items collected from your home or workplace find out more about our parcel collect service at royalmail.com slash collection so if you don't want to leave your house at all then there is an option for your items to be collected you just have to go on that website to find out more however i don't think the post box will be able to fit my parcel so i usually just you know disregard this option so if i go and continue sensitive data time okay so this is the sensitive data that i cannot reveal so it will all be blurred out it's so hard doing international labels because they're so different from UK addresses so you don't know which one is which. So now that I have inputted her data, I'm going to go down. So then this is what I'm presented with. What does your package contain? As you're sending to an address outside the United Kingdom, you'll need to add a bit more information about your items. This will appear on the customs document and may be sent electronically to the customs authority in the destination country. So item description. So if I go on this little question mark, a short description of the items in your package, you'll need to add a suitable description for each type of item you're sending, e.g. books, photographs, clothes or chocolate. Okay, cool. So I'm sending off a hair butter, eyelashes, lash serum, oil serum, lip gloss, lip scrub and lip applicator and a candy quantity weight is one yeah so item weight is 460 grams item value just means how much is each product worth and then just accumulate it and then put the sum of the total total item value is 104 pounds and 73p continue once again you have to opt out from showing your address in the label so now i'm going to input my own sensitive data and then once again i'm just going to go ahead and put my email address i confirm that i have entered the correct weight and i confirm i have read and understood the terms also by the way if you wanted to know more about this customs form cn22 we can go ahead and search it up right now together so if we go on custom forms, you can also find it on the Royal Mail website or you can go inside as well. So in regards to custom forms for sending abroad, from the 29th of December 2020, you will need to complete custom forms for goods sent to countries outside of the UK. This includes EU countries apart from sending items from Northern Ireland. You can get all the custom forms you need in branch, but to speed the process up, you can also print these forms at home. You can always ask a member of staff in branch if you have any questions. So how it works, if you're filling out a customs declaration form, you will need to follow the steps below. Letters on large letters containing only correspondence, commercial invoices or shipping documents do not require customs declaration. Before preparing any goods for sending, please check whether or not the item is prohibited or restricted. There can be certain restrictions on what you can send to certain individual organisations or countries. You can always ask the number of staff in branch if you have any additional queries or questions. So find the customs forms you need, items sent by Royal Mail. Again, if the item's worth up to £270, make sure you include a completed and signed CM22 customs form. If you're sending your item by Royal Mail International Tract, signed or tract signed service, you can download this label here. So if you download, if you are doing a track, this is the CM22 form. It's very identical to the non track as well. So if you're sending your item by Royal Mail International Standard, which is me, you, um, your post office branch can give you the appropriate barcoded CN22 label. 
So yeah, last time when I was sending off to America, I did actually go into the post office to get a CM22 form. So yeah, so if items again are worth over £270, complete and send a CM23 form. You can download one here. You can ask staff for help with this in branch also. So this is what you have to fill out if your item is valued over £270. But items sent with parcel forms, here are the requirements. You'll need to fill out a CP72, but I don't deal with parcel forms. So what I'm going to do is how to complete a CN22 form. So this is how it looks like. You can get it from your store or you can download it online. Um, CN22 are custom forms used when sending goods internationally. The forms are scanned by optical character recognition, so it is important to fill them in legibly with as much information as you can to avoid delays in your items being received. There are two different CN22 labels that have the same content. The label for International Standard or Economy Services carries a barcode and is available only in branch. Here we describe the form used with Royal Mail International Track and Sign, Track and Sign services. So number one is uh, maybe open officially, yeah? So this means the custom officials can open the item if they need to inspect the content. Uh, number two is write your name and address in block letters. CN22 form, you have to reveal your address. And if you do have a home address, then one way you can circumvent this issue is by actually buying a business address online. Probably goes for maybe 40 to 50 to 70 perhaps pounds annually. Um, for you to maintain your business address and that way you ensure to you know maintain the privacy of your own home That's definitely a good alternative to look into if you don't want your home address being on any sort of declaration form So number three is completing the section will speed up clearance when your item reaches its destination Some countries have a different threshold for paying duty on gifts So I would usually just go for sale of goods You can if it's a document if it's a gift commercial sample return goods or other uh, Other you have to specify where it is. Uh, I would pick sale of goods so number four is be as clear and detailed about the contents of your item as you can. It will help avoid delays or custom officials having to open your items. What I just did previously was me specifying each item within that package. So you have to be as descriptive as possible to avoid any delays. And then just say the quantity, how much it weighs and the value, which you've just seen me do previously. Um, number five is this is the total gross weight, including packaging. Cool. And number six, this box only needs to be completed if you are a business sending commercial items. If so, you need to provide the HS tariff code. You can find this on the WCO, which is the World Customs Organization. You will also need to attach an invoice to the item. And number seven is if applicable, VAT registration number. If you are a VAT registered company, then you need to also give your number here. If you're a business turning over £85,000 per year, I believe, then you are eligible for a VAT. But because I'm just starting out, I don't have a VAT number, but hopefully soon come. Um, number eight is signing here confirms that you as the sender are liable for the item. Also, that the information that you've provided is correct and that you are not sending anything dangerous. Number nine is just here. So number nine is the registration marks in the corners help the optical character recognition to align the form. So I've had a question in the past in regards to tariffs so again if you want to know what your hs tariff code is is you just have to go under world customs organization hs just stands for harmonized system and then here you can find your code and um, the table of contents which will hopefully specify which item your tariff code falls under so if i was meant to look carefully I would know that my item falls under the essential oils and the cosmetics preparations. So I'll go on that and then I will go and read it and see which one is more specific towards my product. So you have to read it carefully. So perfumes and toilet waters, beauty or makeup preparations and preparations for the care of the skin. If you're a skincare business, then your tariff will fall under these ones. I do have a lip makeup preparations so one of my tariffs will be 3304.10 and um, again because my custom labels i'm gonna have to do it in branch i'm just gonna have to note down this tariff code 
because I'm also doing preparation for the use on the hair, I'm going to have to go ahead and wrap this tarot coat down as well. I don't do shampoos, um, preparation for permanent waving or straightening, hair lacquers, and I don't do any of that. So I'm just going to also write the HS code for other, which is preparation for use on the hair, 3305.90. Cool, so basically please go ahead and go on this site, postoffice.co.uk and then you can easily access the World Customs Organisations and then you have to look carefully as to which one your package falls under and then just get the tariff code from there. I hope that clears up any of your um, inquiries. Now I'm going to go back to my shipping label to produce it. Um, so I can confirm that I'm entering the correct weight for the items being sent and that I am not sending any item which is prohibited or restricted in the UK or overseas. And I can also confirm that I've read and understood the terms and conditions. So now I'm going to go ahead and pay for it via my um, business bank card. You can also pay with PayPal as well, but I just prefer my business card. So I'm going to make the payment. It should produce my international shipping label and Starlink's just notifying me that I've paid for it. So once you've put, inputted your email address by the way, it will send you, send you an email confirming that you've paid for it. But also there is a link, if you no longer want the shipping label then you can ask for a refund and get your money back as well. I have to post this by the 17th of February 2021 so they gave me a 7 day leeway as to when I can send off this package and when this shipping label will be valid till. So yeah, please ensure to send it off before the uh, deadline or else it just expires and you can no longer send off your package. So yeah, so now that I'm done with my shipping label I'm going to print it out. <laughs> me showing you guys how it looks like right before I'm gonna go to the post office to hand in um, the packages so I make sure each shipping label corresponds with the package the last thing you want to do is mix and match your packages uh, with your labels so always double check to make sure the shipping label corresponds with the package and then once you've done that all that's left to do is to stick it onto the package and then ship it off to your local post office or to your Royal Mail delivery office. And that really is it guys, Bob's your uncle. So this is the last part of the video where I dispel some misconceptions. I'm gonna go through some of the questions that I've received in the past. So a few of the questions are, do you put the customs label inside or outside the box? Ideally you have to put it out, well not ideally, you have to put it outside of the box because when it gets to the border control, they need to be able to uh, know what's in Inside. and the only way they'll know what's inside of the package is if you have your CN22 custom forms on your package they can't you know they don't have laser eyes so they, they can't read what's inside so please put it on top of your package um, yeah there's just a lot of questions pertaining to the CN22 form so this is how the CN22 form looks like very convenient very small and um, i'm going to input the information and then literally going to peel it off and then stick it on my parcel so i'm going to rewrite the information but do it physically as opposed to digitally that way i can stick it onto my parcel and they also request you to write in block letters as well so i'm going to go ahead in my trusted black pen i'm going to go ahead and copy what i wrote down earlier onto my cm22 form it's CN22B by the way. This is the new form that they've released for, you know, post-Brexit. So, send the name. And whilst the other post office, you might as well ask to have a few. I went ahead and asked for like three guys. Oh yeah, you have to write down your address on this. I'm sorry. If you don't want to write down your address, you already know what to do. Buy a business address online. Yay! That is literally how you do it. So now I've literally, I'm going to blur it out. But that's how you do it. So now I have my parcel and I have my shipping label and all that there is for me to do is put on my CN22 form and probably put up here, right here. Uh, and then stick it on my parcel and then I'm gonna send it off to the post office and that is how you do it. It's very simple um, and I just hope that I've been able to dispel some of the misconceptions as well. If you have any questions or any inquiries, please let me know down below. That's it from me guys. And if you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something from it, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And yeah, subscribe if you want as well. I hope it's helped you in any form, shape or way. And yeah. Mm, give it a thumbs up because some of you guys will be stingy with the likes don't forget to like it okay cool
Bye. Also, be careful of scams as well because Royal Mail just sent me an email now and I don't believe it's from Royal Mail, it's from a different email address. So, always make sure to read your email address so you don't get scammed. They just told me now that I have a parcel number of whatever and it's on the way. Your package should stop at our post. £2.95p shipping cost has not been paid. If shipping cost is not paid, the package will be returned. That's a lie. So, be very vigilant about you know dodgy emails sent from Royal Mail or DPD or any anything like that because you just have to check the email address and if it doesn't correspond to their official email address then it's a scam just be wary about that because last time it nearly tricked me guy i was just about to enter all my card details thinking that it was an actual um parcel because i order a lot of parcels on the regular and i had to think deeply they said it was arriving in the morning and my dad's usually up really early in the mornings so he would have definitely got the package and then i had to realize wait i didn't actually order anything this time around so be very careful because i nearly got scammed i nearly got scammed y'all